e ma nle ni be yen o ni le loko esiku dede asiko yi hello everyone it's aderon ke again i hope your day is going well um based on popular demand <laughs> I've been I asked on Instagram and people said yes. Um, I would like to translate the Lukumi song for issue for Elegba, Elegua. Uh, I like to translate it to Yoruba and then to English, just so that people know what they're saying when they sing the song. So um, I believe this is the first. I heard the video first, uh, the song first from this video, uh, but there's also a, uh, a version from eBay. <laughs> So the words in Lukumi sort of sound like Obanke ye ke ye elegua alaro ye yo barasua yo Obanke ye ke ye elegua alaro ye lo barasua yo Obanke ye ke ye elegua something of that nature so I just want to adjust it to Yoruba uh this is a a song for for issue and let's see what the words would look like in Yoruba. First of all, let's start from there. So what I noticed is that um, there are different variants of it. I've listened to two, three, four renditions of the same song. And it appears that sometimes the tenses change um, sometimes there are inclusions of other words, sometimes there are omissions, you know, but essentially this is the, the point of the song, what is available here. So in Yoruba, the same words are, Oban keye, keye elegba, alaroye, in Lukumi, the G doesn't exist, it's yi. So you have, instead of Ibeji, you have Ibei or Ibei. I, I'm, I'm not too sure on the intonation, but I know that there's no, what you call J in English, G in Yoruba. There's no this. So whenever you see words like jaw or like, you know, words like that, it typically just think of Yi as what they would use. So Ibei would be kind of, I don't think it's, I don't know what old Spanish sounded like, but I don't think they use this. So I'm not too sure on that anyway. So Yi, Yi is the, is the replacement. So instead of, so if you listen to the words again, something like that, this is Yi, this is Instead of jaw, it's yo, something like that. Then suayo, there's no she in Lukumi either. She, the letter she that we have. So whenever there's something that should have the she intonation, it's typically like, it's, it's, it's just not, it just doesn't sound the same anymore because of the Spanish influence. So, but there's no she, that she sound is not, was not present in, old Spanish and I, I don't think it is 
present in any kind of Spanish now. So the words in Yoruba, oro inu only, the lyrics, the words in the song, oro, word, inu, in, only the song, the words in the song, the lyrics would be, oban keye, keye elegba, alaro ye, joba wa shiwaju, oban keye, keye elegba, alaro ye, joba wa shiwaju, and then the second part, oban keye, keye elegba, Alaro ye lo ba wa shiwaju. Oban keye keye legba. Alaro ye jo ba wa shiwaju. Oban keye keye legba. Alaro ye lo ba wa shiwaju. Those are the those are the words in the song. Again, what I noticed is sometimes the tenses change. Some words change, like one or two words, or like their additions. So. This one says, what I have here is, Alaro ye joba wa shiwaju for a reason. Alaro ye luba wa shiwaju for a reason. I've heard those, but I know that those are not the only versions that are available in the cantos that are out there. So maybe it's just people, for some people, it's just misspellings. They're just saying something because they don't, for some people, it's not, it's none of this because they are just inserting something. Again, there's, such a huge disconnect from, you know, you, to no fault of, you know, it's, it's not their fault. Please don't take it the wrong way. You know, what I'm just saying is sometimes people don't know what they're saying, but like, at least they're making an attempt, you know, with all respect. Please don't be, please don't be mad. I'm just, you know. So, uh, for some people, they, they would just say something, but you may hear versions like, Alaro ye tibawa shiwaju, you know. Alaroye has done this. This one is Alaroye, please do this. This one is Alaroye has done this as well. Th there would be versions like Alaroye is doing this or Alaroye will do this. They are just different variations, you know, legitimate variations. So it, it must mean that different ancestors were singing it in ways that sort of pertain to them. Um... I've heard this rendition, that's why I'm using this one. But if you hear, instead of like lo, if you hear t or um, alaroye, abawa shiwaju, something like that, don't fret, <laughs> don't even sweat it. They're essentially like saying the same thing, just probably with different tenses. You know, for some it's future tense, for some it's past tense, you know. So don't worry about it. Um, the first part of this one sounds like a plea, and this one sounds like gratitude. So, if you say, Alaroye joba wa shiwaju, which is the, the, the variation that is here. Alaroye yobara suwaye. Alaroye yobara Alaroye yobara I told you that there's no, uh, G in old lukumi, so the, uh, in Lukumi, in old, in the Spanish-influenced uh, Yoruba, so there's no, so it's Jo, but this is what the the Familia. lead Familia. singer is saying in this version. Jo is please, you know. I'll get there. I will do the translation word for word, but this one sounds like a plea because it has Jo in it, and this one sounds like gratitude because it has lo in it but the rest of the words are essentially the same oban keye keye elegba alaro ye joba wa shiwaju and this one says alaro ye lo ba wa shiwaju so this sounds like a plea this sounds like gratitude let's start by translating this first part you know and understanding what it means oban keye keye elegba Alaro ye jobawa shiwaju. Shiwaju, when shortened or shrunk, is shaju, shaju, and you would hear that often as well. Shiwaju is the fuller version of shaju. Shaju is just a shrunk version of this. It's the exact same meaning. It both have the exact same meanings. They're just uh, different spelling wise. Um, I told you that in Lukumi, influenced by 
Spanish, old Spanish. I don't know what the new Spanish is. I, <laughs> I'm not sure. But influenced by the old Spanish, uh, there was no what we call G in Yoruba. So it would be Yi. So Swayo is like a... It's like a, it's an attempt to, sh to, sh to say shaju. First of all, if you imagine that this G, what you call J in English, this G is Yi, it would be shayo, shayo, something like that. But then there's no she in Lukumi. So eventually just ended up being swayo as a result of the environmental factors and the other languages that were, were being spoken, the Spanish, you know, Swayo, but it's really Shaju. Now, anybody who is a, who speaks Lukumi to a degree, <laughs> even if uh, you're not as fluent, <laughs> just like me, uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit fluent in Lukumi, I'm kidding, uh, but Shaju, Shaju, anybody, that is fluent in Lukumi to a degree would know that chi chi would often occur instead of she. So you you would hear words like chango. You would hear um, just anything that that has she in it would be chi chi. What you call ch in English? We don't have c in Yoruba. So chi chi that sound. Um, but that one was. A little bit more recent and when I say more recent you know of course I'm still talking about centuries ago you know still during slavery uh, still in that era at uh, the initial set set of ancestors while attempting to retain certain songs and compose more still try to maintain the she sound to a degree eventually became See, of course, um, in several in places like Oshogbo, for example, she is was just introduced. You know, again, this is still centuries ago. They would say Oshogbo, they would say Osun, they would say Sango. There was no she till now. I've never heard Babele Bubon, for instance, say she is always see Osun, Sango. You know, so of course a lot of our ancestors would have been the sea people and if you were from like i don't know maybe or yo or in what places do they use she did they start to use she the the letter the sound first appear i, I think it's or yo just because you know samuel ajayi crowther sort of popularized the using she and it was from the Oyo area so i would assume but yeah the initial set of ancestors tried to maintain it you know to a degree but it was their descendants their children downwards that could not so she eventually became chi this lets me know that this is a really really old song for a version of she or c this letter to still be retained you know to some degree it tells me that it's much much older than the versions that have chi chi ch that chi sound in them so this is a lot older than a lot of the more recent ones um so shaju basically is uh swayo swayo is shaju now let's do this word for word let's translate these words word for word to understand what they mean oba is a presider or ruler oba is presider or ruler and in and of itself it, it is what we call presiders and rulers but in and of itself it is um Sort of like the protector. When I was explaining, when I was doing my introductory video into the Yoruba lessons for beginners series, I mentioned that sometimes tones would be different so that you can, to differentiate, you know, words for differentiation. One of the rationals for having 
varying tones for having a tonal language is to differentiate i said ba ba is to patch so imagine that something is flying and it goes this way something is flying and it comes this way zoom jump and it you know it patches sorry i know that i have a limited space here and it patches and it goes this way it patches that is ba but ba suggests that that thing is already on the ground but then it is protecting something something is is it's presiding over something in like a protective sort of stance think of uh think of a hen i think that was the exact example that i gave as well on top of our eggs ba do you know in alignment with even the the what is being done do do is the lower tone so do ba this is <laughs> this is me going into like the the your the real real yoruba history the more spiritual the more undocumented um aspect that you know i just know based off of just because i was there <laughs> myself let's not go into that yet but you know ba that ba re you know suggests that something is already on a flat uh, you know surface already balanced but is protecting other balanced things so the way that a hen will protect her eggs for instance or the way that um even a leopard will when they're about to hunt they will just ground themselves so Abba is the one who does that who presides over whether it's a hen presiding over eggs or uh, a leopard just presiding over the ground i guess so that they can hunt or but it just it just has that presiding protective sort of thing so in and of itself this just tells you that the one major function you know of the of the the yoruba ruler is to protect their people even if nothing else is involved being protective of their people is seems like is not just seems like is appears to be is you know their their major role oba is the one who presides over it could be oba is not king or queen our, gen, our pronouns are not gender differentiating a lot of uh the i think a lot of things just went way south after like the introduction of islam and this was even before british like colonization there was first islamic colonization which is much less documented and much less discussed you know and it was not long after that time that ilori well it was you know decades after then maybe even actually i'm messing the dates up in my head but ilori sort of became an islamic state uh and all that anyway the one who presides over birds generally are associated with yoruba king if you look at the yoruba king's crown or if you just google yoruba crown you you can do it after this video if you have like a second device you see that a lot of birds are depicted on the crown you know the depiction of birds for some they look like ends for some it is the robin that is being depicted you know pretty lolo gonji you know so birds apart from leopards and earring and uh, elephants birds are also um common spirit animals or like animals that are associated with yoruba kings just that so anyway oba is the one who presides over mm. whenever mm is in a sentence whether it causes the introduction of words like am or is or are 
or otherwise or maybe it influences the next word it just tells you that that sentence is in a present tense or in continuous tense so oba and then keye is not an original word keye is a contraction of two words ko is to take in large amounts like you know gather and pack and what that tells you and eye is glory honor prestige all of these words seem to align with the Yoruba meaning of the word. That, that was why I included all three. Back to ko. Ko is a much, sig much more significant variant of take than mu. Maybe not necessarily significant. You know, it might be in, in the mundane sense of it as well. If something if something is in a singular piece like this you just say mu take mu because you're just taking it if it's in a basket if it's already but if there are large amounts of it you would say ko ko if you're taking something in a single amount or like in a single singular quantity or like you know just a, maybe two or three things Especially if it is one thing anyway. Let's just stick with the one thing. It would be mu. But if you're taking multiple, if I say mu erwe, take your property. I'm, I'm just suggesting that it might be just one bag or one. But if I say ko, then you're taking everything. You're taking things in larger amounts than just one. So ko. And that suggests that, you know, it's not just mu. Mu. Mu eye. It's not just take it means you know take the prestige you have a lot of prestige pack them basically pack the prestige take the prestige in large amounts take the prestige in large amounts or take the honor or the glory in large amounts so that should already like tell you what they're trying to say there like there's a lot of honor for you we honor you greatly type of thing um but let's let's continue Ko eye, again, the same thing. Elegba. Elegba is a characteristic name of Eshu. I dedicated a whole video explaining what Elegba is. So I'll just link it somewhere so you can find it. You know. Obang keye. Keye elegba. So when you put these words together, it, it tells you the presider takes the honor. Take the honor. Elegba. The presider takes the honor, take the honor, elegba. And then, alaro ye joba wa shi waju. Alaro ye joba wa shi waju. Oban kaya kaya elegba. Um, alaro ye. Allah is the one who. That is what it suggests. The one who, and then ro. Ah. Nkotoju miri, timba dele maro yifunle, ro, ro. Anyways, tell, narrate, or relate. You're telling something, you're narrating something, you're relating something. And then, ye is to understand. O ye is understanding. Ye is to understand. So, what this just means, essentially, is the one who narrates in such a way the in such a way is sort of inferred you will notice that it's not here it's such a sort of inferred the one who narrates in such a way that one understands so it's the yoruba way of saying the advocate the great explainer if someone can explain something you know if you can explain things in such a way that you know people have a clearer picture well, whoever you're representing is well represented. You know, you are a great alaroye. You're a great advocate. You know, you are basically you are an advocate. Maybe not necessarily great. <laughs> this is me just putting great. But the, for the fact that you're even an advocate suggests that to some degree you know how to explain somebody's plight. You know, you know how to really present people's issues before whatever whatever 
force or in front of whatever people the one who narrates in such a way that one understands the advocate i've explained what alaroye means in alaroye jobawa shiwaju jo is a shrunk version of jowo jowo in and of itself in its original sense it is allow or let but eventually please also became like one of its meanings you know if i say jowo jowo for me if i say please um let it go for me or like you know let me have it type of thing you would notice that jowo is apparent twice the first jowo is please because i'm saying let let me have it so like please let me have it but basically it just became please too so jowo allow or let and then you know please but is depending on the context it could be help it could be wit or ba me lo he or she went with me but if i say ba mi be akpomiwa help me bring my bag you know i'm saying help so it could be help it could be with solely depending on the context no other factor just the context uh wa is us wa is us she wa you is go before or lead but it's not an original word either she is to open if i say she amui or she naturally what would i call this in yoruba maybe agbe she agbe this bottle open it she is open she is open or, or or kick start maybe to kick start a process or to go type of thing you know go kick start you know open you know type of thing. and then iwaju is the front iwaju is the front so when you sort of put that together you sort of get maybe something like open in front or like you know go in front so shiwaju is go before or lead shiwaju is go before or lead um so when you put those together alaro yi jobawa shiwaju you have the advocate please help us go before or like please help us go in front but if you translate this is just a transliteration so to say if you translate it you get the advocate please go before us or the advocate please lead us something like that so that was why i said this is a plea you know this is the plea version of the variant that can exist so i'm sure that our ancestors would have sung this one or would have sung this one i apologize would have sung this one maybe when they wanted wanted to undertake something or maybe go somewhere or like i don't really have the full picture i don't know it just sort of insinuates that they would have maybe it's not necessarily a physical journey that they would have sung this for maybe even like just their journey in this foreign lands even this is me just inferring but i think i'm like i just feel like i'm getting closer to what it would have been for you know maybe just their their journey in this foreign lands you know or it could have been a physical journey maybe they were i don't know if it would have, it would have been like an escape song you know or maybe it just sort of insinuates that something is about to be done the advocate go before us i think i think that's that's what it is but i don't want to over explain this one i'll let you especially like for the direct i'm a descendant too you know but for the more direct descendants if you feel like you know you have an idea 
of the kind of journey that they would have something that they would have wanted to undertake for them to sing this you can let us know in the comment section below could have been a spiritual my mind tells me it could have been like actually i don't know let me not let me just open the floor for people to leave their contributions the second part of the song is the gratitude part. So, alaro ye lo, lo. So this, you know, I've already explained. Oban keye keye legba. The precise that takes the hana takes take the hana, elegba, and then lo. The lo difference. Lo is a contraction of two words. Ni is is. O is like the one or even like the one who the who is sometimes already inferred from it that that was i like put who in brackets but like yeah the one or the one who you know so yeah i already explained this in one of the previous slides not in the previous one but in one of the previous one ones Nio is the one by his help with you know Shiwaju. So the advocate is the one who helped us go before, or you know, to make it sound better, to translate instead of just transliterate, to translate it would be the advocate went before or led us. The advocate went before us, the advocate led us. You know so for whatever version that you hear don't worry it still kind of aligns with this if you hear alaro ye lomba wa shiwaju the advocate is the one who is going before us i said when mm, is introduced in a sentence it makes it a present tense or a present continuous tensed sentence so um i don't know Obankeye, this, so I've explained it here. I said, when un is introduced, it's a present or continuous tense maker. So if you hear, alaro ye lon bawa shiwaju, the advocate is the one who's gone before. Alaro ye te bawa shiwaju, the advocate is the one that has gone before, you know, or the advocate has gone before. If you want to exclude the, is the one that, you know, is a, I think it's tautology or something. Um, or the advocate will go before us so whatever version you hear don't worry it still aligns with this the plea part of it that i've heard in several renditions you you would hear your not jaw because of the spanish influence the spanish dilution so alaro ye yo bara suayo you know alaro ye yo bara suayo or alaro ye the the, the it, it has become so non tonal that you will not even hear the alaro ye you would hear alaro ye something like that or alaro ye if they are just saying it you know in regular it has become a bit non tonal or like sparsely tonal because of spanish again let's blame it all on spanish <laughs> so um alaro ye lo ara alaro ye yo bara suayo is alaro ye yo bawa shiwaju is this the advocate please go before us please lead us the the presider takes the honor take the honor elegba the advocate please go before or lead us that that is the plea and the victory song is the the advocate has gone before us. So maybe something happened and they were like, oh, that was much, much easier than it would have been otherwise if we didn't receive some kind of supernatural help, external help from Elegba. Then it would be, you know, if she was going to be passionate about things like this when it comes to like in injustice and you know yeah <laughs> the 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 results may not 
may not be presented or may not be at the time that one wants when it comes to justice, you know, but justice will always be served. That is one thing that we shouldn't forget. Justice will always be served. And you can relate this to almost anything. Um, you know, the presider takes the honor, take the honor, elect, but a human may not, or when humans are in charge of justice, of course, <laughs> it seems like justice may not always prevail, but it seems to take a bit of time. And then you would see that in fact, justice has prevailed in this case, or it appears like justice really is going to prevail in this case. And it won't be in the hands of the humans anymore. So, but that's another sphere entirely. Let me just stick to this one. Uh, the presider takes the honor, take the honor, Elegba. The advocate went before us. So it's like a gratitude song, like a victory song, you know, um, go before us. Like I said, I'm not exactly sure. I know that in the 80, in the 80 um, sphere, you know, as a result of their revolution, there are similar songs like this, sort of like victory songs or like even songs that involve a lot of calling on Ogun. I know that there are songs like that that are even still very present. They are not, they are not songs that people have forgotten, you know, but I don't really speak a lot of French, so I may not be able to identify them. They call issue, uh, Papa, is it? Papa Legba or something like that. Or uh, pa Papa Legba. I know that it's Elegba with the E removed, you know, as a result of the AT influence. I think they speak French in AT, you know, as a result of the French influence as well. They just, they didn't even bother about this one. They just excluded it totally, you know. So it became Papa Legba instead of Papa Elegba. No, it became Papa Legba. Egba is uh, a place in Ogun State. Uh, is uh, what people from a part of Ogun State are called. So I know that people say, but when I first saw it, I was like, Papa Legba was like, what does Egba have to do with issues so specifically that it's been referred to as Papa Legba? But then it was much later when I saw the context that it was being used in. And I was like, oh, so you mean uh, Baba Legba, you know. So Papa Legba, the French kind of way of saying Baba Legba or, you know. So I know that in their, in their, in that case, in their environment, they sang a lot of, you know, songs like victory songs and all that. For this one, I can't necessarily say that this was what was happening in Cuba at the time. Or like maybe there was any kind of revolution going on or... That was why I said it's probably just like even their journey in this foreign land, maybe not necessarily like a journey into something, but it could be. I'll let the direct descendants tell us. Um, so, yeah. Oban keye, keye elegba. Alaro ye, jobawa shiwaju. Oban keye, keye elegba. Alaro ye, lubawa shiwaju. You know. Alaro ye ti bawa shiwaju. Alaro ya bawa shiwaju. For whatever version that you hear, even the ones that uh, don't uh, have a lot of, you know, formed words, you know, like I said, people don't really remember. <laughs> wow. It, it takes a lot of willpower to even want to remember, you know, from both ends, from the inside Nigeria and outside Nigeria, you know, regions or spheres. It takes a lot of willpower because, like I said, as a result of no fault of our own, we've really gone through a lot, a lot of persecution, you know, as a result of colonialism and kidnapping and all that, you know, all that really painful past. But... I'm glad that we're here. <laughs> we're glad that we're here. So that this is what the song means, essentially. I'm trying to see if I'm forgetting anything because I don't want to leave anything out. 
You can even say, Alaro ye, yo bawa shiwaju. Or Alaro ye. Instead of saying yo, because yo, when combined, is like yo. So you can say, Alaro ye, yo bawa shiwaju. You know. It sounds like that is what Alaro ye, uh, what they are saying in the song. Alar, uh, but I know that they are saying, uh, Alaro ye, yo. Not Alaro ye, yo. But you can say that as well. That would uh, that would be quite similar to Alaro ye a bawa shiwaju. You know, I know that it's it's they are both are similar. Alaro ye yo bawa shiwaju. Alaro ye a bawa shiwaju. But I know that in the in the song in the Ibei rendition, Ibei and the I forget the name of their group. Familia. the Cuba you know I know that I know that that's what they are saying essentially it's not you it sounds like it could be because of the you know ye but I know that it's just the G that was you know as a result of several factors turned to ye so you uh you for jaw again the o o the the or uh, you know the she the that's the secret to learning how to speak lukumi fast but I, I suppose a lot of people want to learn how to speak like you know yoruba not lukumi <laughs> because i have a lot of lukumi people trying to learn yoruba so trying to align what they are saying with yoruba so but if you want to learn to speak lukumi especially amongst people in cuba of course just remember that for a lot of like yoruba for the g in yoruba it would be ye the she would have to go you can replace that with chi you know um the they are just slight slight and you will sort of have to make it less tonal and voila <laughs> you are speaking lukumi so if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask and i'll see you in the next video Enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>